This video tutorial covers symbolization in QGIS where we want to have two dimensions. So in this case, we want to have a quantitative value and a categorical value to represent both size and type. So for the demonstration here, we're going to use power plants. And power plants have a capacity, that's a number, and they also have a fuel type, and that's a name. So we want to symbolize across those two variables. So when we do two variable symbolization within QGIS, um, Sometimes it works fine, other times it gets a little touchy, and that's the scenario that I'm going to present today here. So to get started on this double symbology, or this dual symbology, um, we're going to subselect the larger global power database to South Africa. So we can see we have a polygon here of, that represents South Africa. That's all good and fine. We need to actually put in some data at this point in time to represent the points for the power plants. So I'm going to go ahead and get that now. That's in a shapefile format here. So I'm using uh, power plants that have been selected to the location of South Africa. And we can see that we have these points here. Now what we want to do is we want to symbolize across the two variables at this point in time. So we're going to do uh, color first, and then we'll focus in on size. So to do the color, we go to properties, and instead of it being a single symbol now, I want it to be categorical or categorized, and the value is going to be a naming. So in this case, it's primary fuel, and we can see that's a string, ABC. And we can utilize the random colors, color ramp, and just say classify. I have a lot of fuel types here. I really don't need the all others, so I'm going to click off all others, just get rid of that, and say apply, and then OK. And let's go back and take a look at the map now. I can see I have a color representation for the primary fuel type for these power plants. So that's all good and fine so far. I also want to understand their capacity in terms of the size of the dot, the proportional symbolization for the dot. So I'm going to go back to properties. And I have everything set up for color. Now I need to go to size. And then the way that we do that is we go to symbology to the symbol. So I click on the symbol. And then what I have two places that I can work here. I can go to the top level marker or I can go to the simple marker symbol. Okay. So if I go here and go to size at the marker level, I can go to assistant. And under assistant now, I can go get my capacity that's a number. So this is the megawatt capacity. And I refresh it to get the values, fetch value range from layer. And it sees a range from basically one to about four, a little bit more than 4,000 megawatts. Okay, and it can show the symbol proportionality from small to large. I can increase that uh, discrepancy between the high and the low uh, down below here. So I have apply transform curve. So if I want to actually get the curve to represent the histogram of the data, I can pull this line around. I'm not going to uh, apply transform curve right now. I can also select some other methods and some other sizes. So in this case, I'm going to start it at 5. That makes my first tranche of 500 a little bit larger. And then I can go up to, say, 15. So that makes my largest dot a little bit larger. And the proportionality between the small and the large uh, comes in uh, efficiently afterwards. Now, I have several different scale methods. And each one of these scale methods does a slightly different uh, process to this proportional relationship. In my case, I'm just going to use exponential, and I'm going to type in 1 here. Now, if I go to, say, 5, we can see that we uh, have a different relationship. And if I go to 10, we can see that all my lower dots are pretty much the same except for the last two. I'm just going to go to 1 and say, OK, you can play with that to get exactly the size differential that you want. And you go ahead and say, OK, and then say apply, and then say OK. And that gives us a size dimension now. So we're getting pretty close to what we want. Okay. So one thing that we need to do is go to properties and we need to have this show up in the legend. Okay. So to do that, I need to go to advanced and go to data to find size legend. And here I can say legend not enabled. That's why it's not showing up in my layers panel. It's also not going to show up in my layout view. I can also go to separated legend items or I can go to collapsed. Collapsed is very elegant. The problem with collapsed is, is that it doesn't seem to work in version 3.10, which I'm using right now. Uh, 3.14 doesn't have this issue. Um, it shows collapsed legend perfectly fine. 
I haven't been able to find a lot of online documentation why 3.10 is drawing it incorrectly. I've tried it on several machines and I keep running into the same problem. So in this case, I'm just going to stick with separated legend items. So I click on separated legend items. I can manually class this. So I can change the circles to represent, say, 500 versus 1,000. I could also be, you know, 3,000 at the top if I wanted to. But I'll just accept the preview uh, options here and go ahead and say OK. And then I go play it, apply it and say OK. And then if I come back over here, I can see that I have my proportionality in terms of size. And I have the field types below based on color. This is pretty much what I want to have show up now in the legend. But if I head over to, the, to a layout view, and I'm going to draw out the map first, because that's all good and fine. It doesn't look very good because the scale is incorrect. And I draw out my legend here. I can see I only have one dimension, which is the circles. Okay, I'm missing the actual colors. In my right-hand panel under items, in all the properties for item properties, I can see an auto update under legend items, update all. Um, it's showing up here, but it's not showing up actually in the legend. So I need to correct that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click off the legend, click off the map here, and go back to the demo. And we have to do some fine tuning here. So the first thing I want to do is I don't want this default color to show up, this sort of greenish color for my circles. So I'm going to go back to properties. And under the symbol, I'm going to change the color. I need to do that in simple marker, actually. So simple marker fill color is going to be transparent fill. And I'll say OK and say apply. OK. And that's going to give me just the outline of the circle. So if I go back and draw out my legend real quick, I can see I have exactly what I want now, which is the outline of the circle representing the size. That's good. Let's go back to demo. So since these colors aren't showing up, what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and import a second layer. OK. So I go back and get my power plants and say add and say close. So I have a second layer. I'm going to put the second layer underneath the first layer. Okay, so if I click off, I can see my second layer points in this light green color. Click these back on. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the second layer and go to properties. And I'm just going to do the color symbolization for categories. So I go to category, categorized. I go to the value. In this case, remember, we're working with primary fuels. Random colors, classify. Click off. Say OK. And then behind my first layer, I now have color categorization happening again, the second time. The issue here is that these colors aren't exactly the same. So we can see that my biogas is a bright yellow, whereas biogas on the bottom is a orangish color. To change those colors, we just go to copy symbol and then go to paste symbol. Okay, so you can see that my color changed from biogas yellow at the top to biogas yellow on the bottom. Okay, and it also actually applies the size too. Okay, so let's just go through this real quickly together. So we're going to do copy and then go to paste. Then we're going to go gas. We're going to go copy, paste gas. Hydro is copy hydro. Paste the symbol there. Nuclear, we're going to copy the symbol. Nuclear, paste that, that one. Then we'll go to oil. Copy oil, paste oil. Do solar. Paste solar. Waste, copy symbol. Put it in waste. And the last one's going to be wind. Copy wind. So that's kind of an annoying process to do that copy-paste, but essentially now what I have is I have this layer that represents everything that I did over here. It's just not showing up the data-driven legend on the top for the size. So I'm going to click on this guy at the top. I'm going to click off my colors. Okay. So now I just have this one layer representing everything I want, but I have all my color symbolization sitting in the second layer turned off. Okay. One last thing that I want to do here is I want to apply some transparency because we can see that we have these layers clustering, these circles clustering, and there may be points underneath that I want to see. So what I do is I go to Properties, and under Properties now I'm going to go to Symbol, and under Symbol I can make this a little less opaque. 
So in this case, I'll do it, I'll put it at 60. It doesn't have to be right on the bottom, it's 60.8. Okay, there we go. Say okay, say apply, okay. So that gives me a little bit of transparency. I can see these relationships of the proportionality uh, when they cluster on top of each other. Probably want to do the same thing to my second layer too, so that the colors and the legend show up correctly. So I'm going to go to properties and apply that same difference here. We'll go in and we put in 60%. There we go. And say apply, say okay. All right, so now if I click on and off, I have the symbolization exactly what I want. I have it represented twice over, but in the second instance, I don't have the data-driven size applied. I just have the colors applied. Let's go back to our layout. I'm gonna draw this out to make sure I can see it correctly. So that symbolization looks correct on the map. Let's go into the legend itself. Let's see if we get this to draw. So now we can see that we have color showing up with capacity size, which is exactly what we want. So we would go back Make sure that we save the project at this point. Okay, you probably wanna save your layout too. Uh, you might send it out that way. Okay, just saving. Um, what I need to do now is clean up this legend. So what I can do under item properties is I can click off auto update and I can start to clean this up. So the first thing is, is I probably want a little bit better title. So I would click on the title and I would say, uh, South Africa, something like power plant capacity. Let's say okay. Gives me a little cleaner title. Capacity M, I probably want to say that this is um, maybe plant capacity. And I'll put in the unit, which is a megawatt M MW. Say okay. And then I want to get rid of all these tags, the labels that aren't showing actual color. So I just go in and I can actually remove these. Okay, you can select all of them at once. So let me do that. They're all going to go away. And then my next level here, which is my second layer in the map canvas, we'll click on that. I'm going to rename that and now I'm going to call it fuel type. How about we say plant fuel type. Say okay. That gives me my plant fuel types and I don't really necessarily need the polygon, so I'll get rid of the polygon. I guess I could leave it in there and I'll just call that South Africa. Okay, so that's how we can do 3.10. One issue here is that your size, your proportionality, um, you're going to have some limits in terms of the final legend size. So you need to plan for your map layout to include a slightly larger um, legend space than you may do with just symbolizing across one variable, because of course you have two variables sitting on top of each other. But this is a way that we can within 3.10 uh, QGIS show proportional symbols and also categorical symbols for uh, one set of points or one set of features. And again, we're showing both type and a quantity. Quantities to the size and the types to the color itself.